fourth year PhD, PhD candidate at the University of Washington. He will talk about his project Newspaper Navigator, created in collaboration with uh, the Library of Congress Labs. Um, ben, can, can you share your screen? Definitely. Thank you for the uh, the introduction. It's great to be here today. Nice to see some some familiar faces and some new ones as well. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll keep this to, to under 10 minutes um, in the interest of time. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Ben, and I'll be talking about Newspaper Navigator. And so, yes, this project is in collaboration very much with the Library of Congress, with the LC Labs team, the National Digital Newspaper Program, and IT Design and Development at the Library. And so the general idea behind Newspaper Navigator is to ask how we can reimagine searching over the visual content in historic newspaper pages. So in particular, I'm um, looking at the Chronicling America collection, um, which is produced by the Library of Congress and the National Endowment for the Humanities in the United States and has uh, now about 18 million um, digitized pages of historic American newspapers. And so to borrow language from the Library of Congress's digital strategy, the question behind the project project is, can we throw open the treasure chest of this rich visual content by trying to train a machine learning algorithm to process millions of these pages? And um, the general idea behind Newspaper Navigator is to start with these raw newspaper scans and then end up with a full search interface over this visual content. And so here, there are really two central steps. First is extracting the visual content and creating what I call the Newspaper Navigator data set. And the second part of it is then reimagining how we search over it with the search application. So let me just very briefly dive into the data set. Um, you can find it at news-navigator.labs.log.gov. And so in this step of the project, and I'm just certainly happy to answer questions about this, I effectively fine-tuned an object detection model on annotations that have been crowdsourced um, through the Library of Congress's Beyond Words initiative, which had volunteers drop bounty boxes around, say, photos, illustrations, maps, comics, things of this nature. Um, and after fine-tuning this object detection model, the idea is we can feed in the newspaper page, get back out these bounty boxes, then we have a classification taxonomy shown here. Then we can go into the underlying OCR and actually extract relevant textual captions for everything. Um, so then now we have a way of searching by keyword as well. Um, and here are just some examples of predicted uh, predictions on held out pages, so not seen during training, um, to give a sense of what the performance looks like. In the top left, you'll see the uh, predicted category along with the confidence score. And generally speaking, we see the performance is doing quite well. It's identifying most of the headlines, segmenting out advertisements, you know, preserving full comic strips, things like that. Um, but let me just very briefly walk through the pipeline. So the idea is in processing the collection in full, for each newspaper page, we can grab the scan, the corresponding OCR, can run this visual content recognition then on the page, crop and save out all the visual content we want, generate the captions from the OCR, as I mentioned, generate uh, image embeddings for visual similarity search, and then we save all of this. And um, so I was able to run this pipeline at scale um, across 16.3 million pages at the time. This was about 99.998% of available pages. In total, this amounted to about 100 terabytes of image and XML data um, and took uh, you know, quite a bit of compute. But overall, we were able to get it done. And I'm um, happy to share that it's also fully hosted. And I'll give some more details to that in a second. Um, one of my favorite things to do with the data set is just to visualize it. And so here's just a quick visualization showing all the maps from 1861 to 1865. And these are all pretty much maps of the American Civil War. Um, in terms of resources for accessing the data set itself, you can find it at news-navigator.labs.loc.gov. There you can query the data set in a computational fashion using S3 requests. But we've also made hundreds of what I call prepackaged data sets making it possible to download, say, all the maps from 1872 or all the photos from 1921 um, in a zip folder, and then also get all of the uh, metadata in JSON or CSV form. Um, in the GitHub repo for the project, we have all the training data. Um, we have a bunch of Jupyter notebooks for training the model, um, for deploying it, things of that nature. And lastly, I'll just uh, give a brief pointer to a technical paper that I presented at CIKM 2020, which goes into a bit more detail just in the data sets construction. Um, I'll mention that all this is in the public domain from the data set to the code. And one of the most fun parts of the project has been tracking use and reuse and happy to talk about that a little bit more. But in the interest of time, let me just go ahead and go to the search application. So one of the real questions after creating the data set, especially after hearing from users, was that while the prepackaged data sets are really nice as a form of access and computing against the data set is great too, how do we actually go ahead and you know, provide some interactive search and discovery here? And so the search application supports um, search functionality across one and a half million photos from the data set. This is actually all the photos from 1900 to 1963. 
Um, here, we actually provide some machine learning uh, affordances, in particular, what I call AI navigators to retrieve visually similar content. And the idea is we expose an interactive machine learning interface to the user to be able to define visual content they're interested in. And I'll show an example in a second, um, but training and predicting here is almost instantaneous. So with that, let me go ahead and just give a very, very quick one minute demo of what this looks like in practice. So you can find the search application at that same URL with slash search appended. Um, and we can go ahead and do a keyword search over these captions. So for example, I can type in baseball. And what we find are about 5,000 images whose captions contain the phrase baseball. And for context, you know, you can click info on a photograph. You get more information about the newspaper page it's from, the date, its newspaper title, the caption with the keyword highlighted in context. We can then go back to Chronicling America, view the image, view the full issue, things of that nature. Um, but I do want to just go ahead and show that interactive machine learning interface here really quickly. So if we scroll through, we see we get a whole bunch of different results. We get action shots, portrait shots, photos of teams, photos of stadiums. And let's say I'm actually interested in you know, action shots of baseball players. So I can go ahead and click the images, and this adds it to what I call my collection. So then if I go ahead to this tab called My Collection, we see that I've aggregated these images. I can download a spreadsheet containing all the information if I want to return to it later. And we also have a save functionality, which copies the URL to your clipboard. Um, for privacy um, preserving reasons, we don't store any information on the back end about user sessions, but you can just re replicate the URL and share it with friends and they'll get back the exact state of your library. Um, but let me go ahead and show this Train My AI Navigators feature really quickly. So here this surfaces an interactive machine learning interface. We see my collections appearing here. And on the right, we find the nearest neighbors of the most relevant images uh, according to visual similarity. So I'm gonna go ahead and call us baseball players. And right now we actually are seeing the nearest neighbors to this one example shown on the left. And what we find are that some of these are examples of baseball players, some are not, right? So we have sailboats or we have um, you know, people in various poses. So I'm gonna go ahead and give those minus signs and say, I wanna try to avoid images like those, but then give thumbs up to the examples of baseball players like so. Then when I click this button to train my AI navigator, the system's actually training an interactive machine learner and re-ranking all the results on the fly. And we see that we're getting more examples of baseball players. So then we can return to the main search page and actually apply this just like we would any other facet. If I click baseball players, it'll re-rank. Um, but in the image interest of time, let me just very briefly wrap up here with a, a one minute note, just saying that um, with this project, I think one of the parts that I've been sort of most excited about with labs has been exploring the socio-technical implications of this work, You know, understanding marginalization and bias, the um, environmental impact of doing this work. So I ended up writing what I call a data archeology span where I trace these four reproductions of the same photo of W.E.B. Du Bois um, as reproduced in black newspapers in Chronicling America. Anyway, just there's a pointer to a digital humanities quarterly piece here um, that I'll happy to put in the chat as well. Um, but I will just wrap up and say once again that you can access the data set, the search application, the GitHub repository from all of these links. Um, and with that, just very briefly acknowledge everyone who's made this project possible. Everyone at the Library of Congress at LC Labs, um, IT Design and Development, and the National Digital Newspaper Program, my advisor, Dan Weld, a host of external collaborators, and I'll mention that this work is supported by an NSF Graduate Research Fellowship and the Library of Congress Innovator in Residence position. Um, but with that, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben, for your presentation. Sorry for